go today on the 5th of May, your name day arena. But it was snowing then and very cold. I felt as though I should never live through it. And you gave a dead thing. But now a year has gone by. If we think of it calmly, you're already wearing white. And your face is radiant. father was carried out, and they fired a salute at the cemetery. He was a general in command of the brigade. There were very few people walking behind his coffin. Then it was raining, heavy <coughs> snow. Why recall it?
lofty matters, philosophizes, and frequently attempts suicide. <laughs> Apparently to make it hot for her husband. I'd have left such a woman long ago. But he puts up with it and merely complains. <laughs> with, 50, with 50 pounds lifted by one hand, and 180 or even 200 by two, I can conclude that two men are not just twice as strong as one, but three times, or even more. For falling hair, two ounces of naphthalene, half a bottle of spirits, <laughs> dissolve and apply daily. <laughs> I'm just making note of that. <laughs> I, but as I was telling you, you place a little cork in a bottle, you place a glass tube through the cork, and then a pinch of ordinary plain alum. Dear Von Ramonet, dear Von Ramonet. <laughs> oh, what is it, my dear, my darling? Tell me, why am I so happy today? Just as though I were sailing before the wind, the broad blue sky above, and hearing white birds floating overhead. Why is that? No, oh, my little white bird. This morning I got up and washed, and suddenly I felt as though everything in this world was, was clear to me, and that I knew how one ought to live. Dear Von Romanich, I know everything. <laughs> Man must work, he must, he must toil by the sweat of his brow, no matter who he is. Alone lies the meaning and purpose of his life. This is happiness, his ecstasy. How good to be a workman. Gets up at dawn and breaks stones in the street. Or a shepherd, or, or a schoolmaster teaching children. Or an engineer on a railroad. Lord, say nothing of man. It's, it's better to be an ox. Better it be a mere horse if only one works. A young woman who gets up at 12 o'clock and has coffee in bed and spends two hours dressing. Lord, how dreadful that is. In the same way that one has a craving for water in hot weather, I have a craving for work. And if I don't get up early and work, you can give me up as a friend, Ivan Romani. Oh, 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 I will. I will give you up. Father trained us to be up at seven. Now, Irina wakes up at seven, then lies in bed at least till nine, thinking. And she looks so serious. You're used to thinking of me as a little girl. It would seem strange to you when I look serious. I'm 20 years old. The longing for work. Oh my goodness, how well I understand it. I have never in my life worked. <laughs> I was born in Petersburg. Cold, idle Petersburg. Into a family that knew nothing of work or worry of any kind. When I used to come home from cadet school, a footman would come and pull off my boots. I'd make it difficult for him. <laughs> and my mother would just gaze at me with adoration, surprised that others didn't do the same. <laughs> yes, I was shielded from one. Though I doubt if they succeeded in shielding me completely. I doubt it. <laughs> the time has come. Something tremendous is hanging over our heads. A powerful, invigorating storm is gathered. It is coming. It is already near. And it will blow away the indolence, the indifference, the prejudice against work, the rotten boredom of our society. Yes, I am going to work. And in 25 or 30 years, Everyone will work. Everyone. I'm not going to work. <laughs> you don't count. Oh, 25 years from now, you'll no longer be here, thank God. In two or three years, you'll die of apoplexy. Or I'll lose my temper and put a bullet through your head, my aim. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I never have done anything. I haven't lifted a finger since the day I left university. 
I've never read a book, only newspapers. Uh, here, uh, for instance, I know from newspapers that ah, there is a fellow named Dobrolyubov. But what he wrote, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, there. I, it, it, someone is calling for me downstairs. Maybe someone has come to see me. I'll be back. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> He's up to something. Yes, he looks so elated when he went out that it's obvious he's about to bring you a present. I wish he would. Yes, it's awful. He's always doing something foolish. <laughs> Green oak by curved seashore. Upon that oak of gold chain. Upon that oak of gold chain. You're not very cheerful today, Masha. Where are you going? Home. Strange. Maybe a name day party? Never mind. I'll come back in the evening. Good goodbye for that. Once again, I wish you health and happiness. In the old days, when father was there, 30 or 40 officers used to come to our name days. And it was a real wreck. But today, there's only a man and a half. It's as silent as a desert. I'm going. I'm in the doldrums. Not very good, so don't listen. Later we'll talk. But for now, I'm off somewhere. Oh, you're so... I understand you, Masha. When a man philosophizes, you'll get philosophy. Or at least sophistry. But when a woman, or women start philosophizing, it's like pulling taffy. And what do you mean by that? <laughs> Nothing. He no sooner cried a laugh than the bear was on his back. Don't fall. <clears throat> Come along, fair hunt, my dear. Your boots are clean. From the district board, uh, from Protopopov, Mikhail Ivanich, a cake. How dare you? Thank him for me. How's that? Thank him for me! Nurse dear, go give him some pie. Go along into the kitchen, Farapont. They'll give you some pie. How's that? Come along, Farapont Spirit Onage. Come along. I don't like that protopop. Kale Potovich, or not. He should not be invited. I didn't invite him. Good. Silver tea set? Oh, you're upon the what have you done? I told you. <laughs> my dears, my darling, you are all I have. You're dearer to me than anything on this earth. I am almost 60. I'm an old man. A lonely, good-for-nothing old man. There is nothing good about me but this love I have for you. <laughs> My child, I have known you since the day you were born. <laughs> I, I held you in my arms. <laughs> yeah, I loved your mother. <laughs> Why such expensive presents? Expensive presents? It's, yeah, you're complete. Take this in there. <laughs> expensive presents. My dear, there's a colonel, a stranger. He's already taken off his overcoat. He is coming in here. Now, Yurinushka can be nice and polite. It's high time we had lunch. Mercy on us. Or she and I suppose. Lieutenant Colonel Vershi. I have the honor to introduce myself. Vershi. It is a pleasure to be in your house at last. My, how you have grown. Please sit down. We're delighted to see you. Oh, how glad I am. How glad I am. But I remember three sisters. I remember three little girls. Well, the faces I no longer remember. But your father, Colonel Prozorov, had three little girls. 
I remember perfectly. I saw them with my own eyes. Oh. How time passes. How time passes. Alexander Ignatievich is from Moscow. From Moscow? You're from Moscow? Yes, from Moscow. Your father was a battery commander there, and I was an officer in the same brigade. Your face, I do seem to remember. I don't remember you. Olya! Olya! Olya, come here! Lieutenant Colonel Vershinin, it turns out, is from Moscow. You must be Olga Sergeyev, the eldest. You are Marie, and you are Arena, the youngest. Moscow? You're from Moscow? Yes. I studied in Moscow and went into the service in Moscow. I was there a long time, but finally have been transferred here, and moved here, as you can see. I, I don't exactly remember. I only remember that there were three sisters. Your father I remember very well. When I close my eyes, I see him as plain as light. Uh, I used to visit you in Moscow. I thought I remembered everyone, and all at once I... Uh, my name is Alexander Ignatievich. Alexander Ignatievich, you are from Moscow. What a surprise. You see, we are going to move there. We, we hope to be there by autumn. It's our native town, you see. We were born there. On old Basmanaya Street. Now I remember. Oh, yeah. You remember at home, they used to speak of the loved one lady. You were lieutenant and in love. And for some reason, they called you Major to tease you. Yes. <laughs> the love lord Major. <laughs> That's right. Only, you had a mustache. How much older you look? How much older? Yes. When I was called the love lord Major, I was young. I was in love. <laughs> but it's different now. But you have a single gray hair. You've grown <laughs> older, but you're still not old. Nevertheless, I am in my 42nd year. Is it long since you left Moscow? 11 years. How are you crying, Masha? <laughs> Me too. I'm starting to cry now, too. I'm fine. What street did you live on? Old Basmanai. We did, too. I used to live on Nemyetskaya Street. There's a gloomy-looking bridge along the way. And underneath that bridge, the water rolls. It makes a lonely man sick and hungry. <laughs> but here, what a broad, magnificent river. A wonderful river. Yes, except that it's cold. It's cold here, and there are mosquitoes. Oh, really? But, but it's a fine healthy Russian climate. <laughs> the river, the woods, and then there are birch trees here. Oh, sweet, modest birches. Of all the trees, I love them the best. It's good to live here. <laughs> Only it's strange that the railway station is 20 verse away, and no one knows why that is. I know why that is. Because if it had been near, it couldn't have been far. And, since it is far, it cannot be near. For a wag for the village. Now I remember you. I remember. I knew your mother. She was a lovely woman. God rest her soul. Mom is buried in Moscow, in the Novo Diavich. Imagine. I'm already beginning to forget her face. We won't be remembered either. We'll all be forgotten. Yes, we will be forgotten. Oh, such is our fate. There is nothing we can do about it. To us, what seems serious, highly important, and significant, a time will come when it will be forgotten or seem unimportant. And it's interesting that we absolutely just cannot know what will be considered great and important. And what pitiful, absurd. Didn't the discoveries of Copernicus, or let us say Columbus, seem pitiful and absurd at first? <laughs> While the shallow nonsense written by some crank appeared to be the truth? And it may be that our present life, 
to which we are all so reconciled. A time will come when it too will seem strange, awkward, very uncertain, not pure, perhaps even sinful. Who can tell? Perhaps our age will be called great to be remembered with respect. Today, there are no torture chambers, no executions, and no invasions. Yet, how much suffering? <laughs> Don't give the Baron his porridge. Just let him philosophize a little. That's not the silly stage. I beg you to leave me alone. <laughs> the suffering, which can be observed, and there is so much of it, speaks for a sort of certain of the moral dump which our society has to say. Uh, yes, yes, of course. You said just now, Baron that the uh, art we will be remembered is great, but people are small just the same. I mean, uh, look at me. <laughs> it would only be to console me if you call my life a great and understandable thing. That's our brother, Andre. He's a scholar in the family. He's probably going to become a professor. Well, Papa was a military man. The son has chosen an academic career, even according to Papa's wish. We haven't stopped teasing him all day. He seems to be slightly in love with a local girl. She'll very likely call on us today. Oh, how she dresses. It's not just that her clothes are aloof and out of style. They're simply awful. A queer, gaudy, yellowish skirt with some sort of vulgar fringe. A red blouse. Such scrub, <laughs> scrub cheeks. Andre's not in love. I can't believe it. But he's simply teasing us. Fool. Yesterday I heard that she was marrying Protopop, chairman of the district board. A good thing, too. Andre, will you come here? This is my brother, Andre Segei. Uh, uh, Prozorov, uh, you are our new battery commander? Just imagine, Alexander Ignatich is from Moscow. Really? Well, I congratulate you. Now my little sisters will give you no peace. <laughs> well, I'm afraid your little sisters are getting tired of me already. Look at this little picture frame Andre gave me today. He made it himself. <laughs> yes, it, it's quite... Do uh, oh, you see the frame above the piano? He made that, too. He's not only a scholar, but he plays the violin and makes all sorts of things out of wood. God, he's just good at everything. Oh, Andre, don't go. He has this way of always going off. Come here. Leave me alone, please. Come on. I, 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 beg, I beg of you to leave me alone. I... What to say? I'm going to start calling you the love lorn violinist. Or the love lorn professor. He's in love. And is in love. Bravo, bravo, Andrews is in love. Oh, love alone! Come <laughs> <laughs> on this earth. Come, come, leave me alone, I beg of you. Uh, I haven't slept all night. I mean, now I fear I'm not quite myself, so as they say. I, I wrote till four o'clock and then went to bed, but it was no use. I simply kept thinking of one thing and another and another, and then at the crack of dawn, the sun simply poured into my bedroom. Uh, during the summer, while I'm here, I want to translate a book from the English. Oh, so you read English, then? Yes. Father, God rest his soul, oppressed us with education. <laughs> it's ridiculous and stupid, but all the same, I must admit that after one year, I begin to fill out. And now I feel as though a weight has been lifted from my body. Thanks to Father, my sisters and I know French, German, and English. And Irina knows Italian besides. But at what a cost! In this town, to know three languages is a needless language. Not even a language, more of a superfluous appendage, like a sixth finger. We know a great deal that is useless. Oh. Now, there you are. 
you know a great deal that is useful. Now it seems to me that there is not and cannot be a town so dull and oppressive that a clever, educated person would ever become useless. Let us say, of the hundred thousand inhabitants of this town, which is backwards and a coup, of course, there are perhaps three people, such as yourself. Now it goes without saying that you cannot vanquish the ignorant masses around you. Through the course of your life, little by little, You'll have to get work and become lost in that crowd of a hundred thousand. But all the same, you will not disappear. You will not be without influence. In generations to come, there may be perhaps six like you, then twelve, and so on. Until finally, your kind becomes the majority. In two or three hundred years, life on this earth will be unimaginably huge. Man needs such a life. And if it is not here, he must expect, foresee, <coughs> dream about it, and prepare for it. And to do this, he will have to know more than his father and grandfather. <laughs> so you complain of knowing a great deal that is useless. I am saying for life. <laughs> Really? Well, that should have been written down. After many years, say, life on Earth will be beautiful. One. But in order to take part in that now, you can talk. We must prepare for it. We must work. <laughs> what a lot of flowers you have. Oh, it's such a splendid apartment. How I envy. All my life I've been hanging in apartments with two chairs and a sofa, and a stove that always smokes. This is exactly what's been lacking in my life. Flowers such as these. Well, nothing can be done about it now. Yes, we must work. Oh, you're probably thinking. The German is getting sentimental about the word of honor. I'm a Russian. I don't even speak German. My father was a member of the Orthodox Church. Uh, I often think to myself, what if one were to begin life over again, unconsciously? That is to say, if one life which has already been lived were only the rough draft, and the other the final topic. I would think about all else. He would try not to repeat himself. Or at least he would create a new setting for his life. I'm married and have two children. But my wife is not well, and so on and so forth. But if I were to live again, I would not marry. No. No. Allow me to congratulate you on your saint say, dear sister, and to wish you sincerely from my heart good health and everything that can be wished for a girl of your age. And to offer you this little book as a gift. The history of our high school, covering 50 years, written by myself. A mere trifle because I have nothing better to do. But read anyways. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Cleegan, teacher of local high school, audit counselor. In this little book, you will find a list of all those who graduated from our high school in the past 50 years. Feki kopatui fakiant meliora pontentes. You gave me the same book at Easter. Impossible! <laughs> well, in that case, give it back. Or better still, give it to the Colonel. Take it, Colonel. You'll need it someday when you are bored. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I was extremely happy to have made your acquaintance. You aren't leaving. Oh, no, no. You must stay for lunch, please. Oh, please do. Well, I have happened upon a name day party. Uh, please forgive me. I didn't know. And I have not offered my congratulations. Today is Sunday, gentlemen. A day of rest. So let us rest. Each according to his age and position. The carpets ought to be taken up for the summer and put away till winter. Persian powder or napoli. The Romans were healthy because they knew how to work, and they knew how to rest. They had men sana e capole sano. 
Their life proceeds in accordance with certain forms. Our director says the chief thing in life is its form. That which loses its form comes to an end. And it's the same with our prosaic lives. Masha loves me. My wife loves me. Oh, and the window curtains, along with the carpets. I'm feeling <laughs> cheerful today. I'm in excellent spirits. Oh, Masha, we are to be at the director's house at 4 o'clock this afternoon. They're organizing a walk for the teachers and their families. I am not going. Masha, dear, why not? <laughs> We'll talk about it later. <coughs> Alright, fine, I'll go. But leave me alone, please. And, af and afterwards, we shall spend the evening at the director's. Despite his poor health, this man tries above everything to be sociable. A superior, noble person. A splendid man. Yesterday, after the meeting, he said to me, I am tired, Fyodor Ilyich. Tired. Hmm. Your clock is seven minutes fast. <laughs> yes, he says. I am tired. Please come to lunch, my friends. There's a meat pie. Ah, Olga, my dear Olga. Yesterday I worked from early morning to 11 o'clock at night. But today I am happy. My dear. A meat pie, splendid. <laughs> hey, don't you dare drink. It's bad for you. Listen to her. <laughs> I'm past all that. It's been two years since I've been on a spree. Anyway, my girl, what does it matter? All the same. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. If I were in your place, I wouldn't go. That's very simple. Don't go, my friend. Don't go. Don't go. I'm bare of the life. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Your health, Colonel. I am a pedagogue and one of the family here. Masha's husband. She is kind. Very kind. <coughs> I will have a little of this dark on. Your health. It is so good to be here. Masha's in a bad humor today. She married at 18 when he seemed you were the cleverest of men. Now it's, it's different. He is the kindest, but not the cleverest. Andre, will you please come? Coming. What are you thinking about? Nothing. I don't like that Slyoni of yours. I'm afraid of him. He talks nothing but nonsense. <laughs> He's a strange man. I am both sorry for him and annoyed by him. <laughs> but more sorry. <laughs> I think he's shy. When I'm alone with him, he can be very intelligent and friendly. But in company, he's a crude fellow. A, a bully. Don't go yet. Well, let them get settled at the table. And let me be near you a little while. What are you thinking about? You are 20. I am not yet 30. How many years lie before us? A long long succession of days full of my love for you. <coughs> Nikolai Lovovich, don't talk to me of love. I have a passionate thirst for life, for struggle, for work. And that thirst is mingled in my soul with my love for you, Marina. And just because you are beautiful, it seems to me that life too is beautiful. What are you thinking about? You say life is beautiful. Yes, but what if it only seems so? Life for us three sisters is not beautiful. It stifles us like weeds. Now I have tears in my eyes. 
we must work, only work. That's why we're so melancholy and take such a gloomy view of life. Because we know nothing of work. We become a people who despise work. They already think I'm the lunch. I'm late. At least my hair seems to be all right. Dear Irina Sergeyevna, I congratulate you. You have such a lot of guests. I really feel awful. Uh, how do you do, Baron? Well, here's Natalia Ivanovna. How do you do, my dear? Congratulations on the name day. You have such a great deal of company. I, I do feel terribly embarrassed. Nonsense. They're all old friends. <laughs> you are wearing a green sash. My dear, that's not right. <laughs> really? Uh, but it's not really green, you see. It's more of a neutral color. <laughs> Irina, I wish you a nice fiance. It's time you've married. <laughs> Natalia Ivanovna, I wish you a nice fiance too. Natalia Ivanovna already has a fiance. Conduct merits a C minus. <laughs> it is a delicious liquor. Uh, what is it made of? Cockroaches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, disgusting. For supper, we're having roast turkey and apple pie. Thank goodness I'll be home all day today and in the evening. Home. You must all come back this evening. May I come too? Oh, please do. They are very formal. <laughs> For love alone has nature put us in this world. <laughs> Stop it, please. Don't you ever get tired of it. Look, they're already at lunch. <laughs> yes, they're lunching already. <laughs> wait, just a minute, wait. One, wait, just another, one more. All over now. Congratulations. Oh, I wish you everything, everything. Weather is delightful. Absolutely marvelous. I've been walking out all morning. I teach gymnastics and cut. You can move now, Irina. It's all right. You look charming today. By the way, here's a top. It makes an amazing sound. Oh, how fascinating! A green oak by a curved seashore. Upon that oak is gold. Upon that oak is gold. Why do I keep saying this phrase has been haunting me ever since the morning? Thirteen at the table. Ladies and gentlemen, can it be that you attach any significance to superstition? If there are thirteen at the table, it means that someone here is in love. It's not you by any chance, it's you by the bitch! I'm an old sinner, but why Natalia Ivanovna should look so embarrassed, I cannot imagine! Oh, oh, oh. Hey, please, please come back, I beg of you! I feel so ashamed. I don't know what's the matter with me, but they keep making fun of me. I know it was bad manners at the table like that, but I can't help it! I can't help it! Oh, my darling, I beg of you, don't be upset. They are only joking, I assure you. It is not meant unkindly. And please, don't be upset, I implore you. They are fond of us both. Come over here where they can't see us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so used to being in company. My darling, my beautiful one. Oh, you. Wonderful, beautiful you. I, I feel so happy. 
so happy. I, I don't understand anything. I, why did I fall in love? When did I fall in love? My darling, be my wife. I love you. Love you as I've never loved anything before.